Hey everybody, it's time to take another trip around the world. We're going to start here with the pond. Once we're done with the pond, we can get this light turned off and then that'll be a little less glare on some of the other tanks as we make our way around the room. Not a ton to talk about here in the pond. It is looking a little uh, cloudy. The water is looking a little murky today and I can tell you why that is. It is because I put a lot of duckweed in there last night. Uh, during my Sunday night live stream, we put a ton of duckweed in there, and it is already gone. It's now Monday afternoon, but that duckweed was gone when I got up this morning and turned the lights on. But you can see that sort of residue gets left on the water. There's all those little sort of speckly things. It looks like there's confetti or something all over the tank, uh, or all over the pond, I should say. That always looks like that the day after I've put a lot of duckweed in there. Uh, that will clear up eventually, and the tank will be looking fine. So by the time we get around to Friday night's live stream, remember I do a live stream every Friday night and Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So make sure you check those out. Uh, we got in here a little bit. We cleaned off a bunch of crud off of the front of the pond i also moved this little uh fish sort of planter ornament i used to have it sitting up here uh and it gave something for this rock to sit on it created a little visual appeal but what was happening was it was allowing all of the water to splash um it was you know partially watering some of this moss and stuff over here but a lot of it was literally just splashing over onto the carpet over there and it was also splashing over onto the carpet on this side and so we wound up just taking that out and putting this rock down kind of flat and that reduces the splash and flow of the water now the water flow is a little bit reduced as it is so i think we got some probably some roots and stuff stuck up on the pump i need to get in there later and get that cleaned off so that is about all we've really got going on here in the pond and I just noticed I've only got 29 minutes worth of video space left. I should have deleted some videos before I started this so now we're going to have to hurry and get this all done within 28 more minutes. So let me move my tripod out of the way. We'll get started on the 29 miscellaneous tank. And as usual, nothing to report in this one. It's just ticking over like a clock. Uh, the other day I did get in here. We did a filter change. Cleaned out the bio sponges. So for once, you're actually seeing my 29 without the water backflowing uh, through this sort of center channel like it normally does. It's actually flowing through the filters at the moment. No need to wipe the glass off. This tank has very low lighting in it, and therefore we never really have to worry about the glass getting too uh, gunged up or anything like that. You can see I got new growth on the Anubias here. It's kind of difficult to tell, but that little tiny point right there is another little new leaf that is uncurling. And I also have this little bit of new growth coming in right there. So that's all that's really going on in the 29, just a little bit of gentle new growth on the plants and of course all the fish are doing well and everybody's doing fine so we'll move on to the 55 gallon gourami tank uh last sunday no last friday night on my live stream one of my live streams i got in there with my siphon hose uh, not the gravel vac, but just the open-ended siphon hose. It's got a really, really strong suction on it. And not only did I remove a lot of the cyanobacteria that was in the tank, but I removed a lot of the java moss that was growing all over the uh, pieces of woodwork there. So the java moss got ripped out. It will grow back. Don't worry about that. Uh, you can see I've still got some cyanobacteria and stuff in there that we need to get out. Uh, it's showing up on camera a lot more than it is uh, visually. I'm not sure why this camera really, really highlights how purple all that stuff down here looks. To the eye, it does not look like that. Uh, but very clearly, there is some cyanobacteria still going on uh, in that area. So we will need to continue the ChemiClean treatment. I also got in here uh, with the siphon and I removed a bunch of that java moss that was growing all over that piece of wood as well. So now you can actually see a little bit of the wood texture and everything on it. Otherwise, fish-wise, everything is doing well. No real issues, no problems. By next Friday's live stream, you can kind of see we're getting a little bit of growth on the glass and everything. This tank is very, very brightly lit. I got four 
floodlight shining down into it and so for a 55 that's an awful lot of light um, and when you put that much light in a tank you're going to have growth on the glass and you're going to have excessive algae and so on and so forth so not unexpected no big mystery behind it just sort of pointing out that we're going to have to get in there again and get that glass wiped down and so we'll probably be doing that this friday on my live stream like i said so check that out if you're interested so let's move on to the 55 gallon tank i did a chemi clean treatment on this tank about a week ago and you can see that purple up in the corner there that is dead or dying cyanobacteria uh, we also had a lot of the green cyanobacteria in here and we vacked a lot of that out last night i also removed a bunch of uh, java moss that was growing back in there that was getting pretty thick and it was starting to clog up the intake filter but you can also see we've got these new shoots coming out all across the front of the tank here these are all crypt because that crypt is growing like crazy a little grungy looking it's got some growth on it but we did get rid of most again of that cyanobacteria that bright green stuff not all of it as you can see there is a little bit of cyanobacteria still going on in there but we got most of it out of the tank and that is good enough for me so the discus is doing well all of the fish are doing well i did have one small dead uh, diamond tetra that was in there a while ago and I don't see it anymore so it must have gotten devoured or completely rotted away it was a little tiny one uh, and so I don't know if it was the runt or whatever but I did lose one of those diamond tetras and my little Buenos Aires tetra right there that has the growths on its face uh, those growths are getting bigger and it now looks like it kind of has one starting on its mouth or kind of in the center of the nose So I don't know how much longer we're gonna have that one again. I'm not concerned about it. I don't think it's a uh, uh, An issue that's going to affect any of the other fish So maybe I'll try to get it out of there and put it in a quarantine tank and see if I can't uh, Treat it for like a fungal infection or something. I don't believe it's a fungal infection, but probably wouldn't hurt to treat it for something just to see if I can't clear that up so I don't know we'll think about it and so that's about all that's going on within this tank as well so we'll move on to my 40 breeder it's got my angelfish Frank Gorshin in it the only other fish that's in this tank is a rubber lip pleco at the moment i did go to pet smart the other day i really do want to add some fish to this tank i think we'd see more of that angelfish if i had some uh dither fish in here and so they do have new fish at the pet smart they have some von rio or flame tetras and they were really pretty in the picture nice nice vibrant red tetra so i really liked them i thought they would go great in here but they only had two left so I didn't buy them. I'll go back next week after they get their new shipment in. And if they've got a full tank of them, I'll get six or seven of those to put in the tank. And we'll have some nice red schooling fish in there to go with the, um, that nice black and white angelfish there. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see a little bit of the foam on the surface. That is from the ChemiClean treatment. I did just put one uh, in the tank last night. Not sure if there's a lot of cyanobacteria going on in the tank. But you can see how all of the hair algae has grown into this almost green, velvety looking material that's growing on the surface of stuff. And so ChemiClean does more than just kill off cyanobacteria. Um, it kills off a lot of bio growth and grunge that develops in the tank. And it's just a way to help sort of clean up a tank once in a while. And so even though I don't see much cyanobacteria in this tank, I am still giving it a ChemiClean treatment just to kill off any extra grunge i really want to try to avoid doing a lot of work in this tank uh, mechanically i want to be able to just sort of let it sort itself out and do its own thing and i'm hoping this treatment will allow us to do that so moving on i'm already a third of the way through my memory space here nothing really to speak of in my 125 here trying to walk up on my fish without startling them too much but you get a pretty good idea of how chilled out everybody in this tank is you can see this here is my jewel cichlid this is a uh, golden shiner these of course are my um silver dollars i have spotted silver dollars and uh, the standard paint job this one here is getting uh really big this fish right here is a white sucker fish caught that myself 
but you can see how all these fish kind of hang out and school together uh, whether it's the African cichlid or it's the uh, silver dollars or the shiners, even that sucker fish, they all kind of hang out. They all just sort of chill out. As a rule, most of the time when people see this tank, it's during or after a feeding and the fish are all swimming around and acting crazy. But most of the time, I get to enjoy this tank being just nice and chilled out uh, and everybody's nice and calm. So we also have my big Pleco that is 11 inches long. I measured him the other day. And I've also got in this tank, in addition to that rainbow shark, I've got a clown pleco. When I turned the lights on this morning, the clown pleco was actually up here in the woodwork. And I got a really good look at it before it made its way back down uh, under into the darkness there. It's a fairly reclusive fish. And it was much bigger than I was expecting. I didn't think the clown plecos got that big to begin with. And I didn't think this one had been in the tank very long, but it was a beefy little fish. It was maybe four inches long, um, and its head was probably wider and thicker than my thumb. So, again, plecos don't get long as much as they do broad and big fat heads on them. They will eventually get long, but proportionately, um, they still get a lot of mass to them as they're lengthening. And so while this one was only uh, four inches long or so, it was a beefy little fish. I was really surprised at how hefty that little um, pleco was. And, of course, last but not least, we'll mention Flo, my uh, West African spotted tilapia back there. And, of course, you've probably noticed my angelfish lurking around in there. And that, as far as I know, is all of the fish in the tank, uh, with the exception of the little uh, gambusia that swim around. And I don't even see any of the gambusia at the moment, so I'm kind of wondering where they're all hiding. There's a bunch of oh there's some you can see them in the back of the tank back there sort of swimming around i got a bunch of uh local mosquito fish or gambusia and i don't know yeah you can see them darting and dashing around yeah there there's a whole school of them in there and so that is the extent of the fish in that tank and of course this tank is also very very brightly lit with six of those floodlights that tank has a floodlight over it this tank has a floodlight over it. I like those floodlights. When we get to the discus tank, that one likewise has six floodlights over it. And then my 20 on the end that we get to also has a floodlight hanging over it. So really, really like those floodlights and the way they uh, light up a tank. So with my fancy goldfish tank here, my ham tank, and the reason I call it my ham tank is because these fish ham it up every time I point the camera at them. We got this nice and cleaned up last night, did a big old water change on it, got the glass wiped down so you can see how pretty all my fancy goldfish are. We got Wednesday here, this is Bruce Brown, this one here is Blackie with a giant brain sack, uh, and this is Melissa Fish here, the other uh, white and orange one. So don't ask me to pick a favorite, they're all fantastic, but... Wednesday here is by far the fanciest. It is a peacock fantail oranda. And she is amazing. And I do know for a fact that this one is a she. It was sexed before I got it. It's given to me as a gift. This is a very, very pricey fish. Uh, and then these three I actually got at the... Petco, and I do not know uh, whether they're male or female or not. And this one was actually a pretty pricey fish, too. I got the one with the giant brain sack there, Blackie. I got that one at Petco for $60. Never imagined I'd spend 60 bucks on a goldfish at a Petco, but I did, and it was worth every penny because that is an amazing fish. And look at the size of that brain sack, it's huge. And it bobs up out of the water when it gets too close to the surface. It's kind of, kind of creepy. And I hate sticking my hand in the tank and having it bump up against me because it feels all squidgy and gross. But it is impressive. Look at the size of that puppy. All right, everybody, moving on. The discus tank. Everybody seems to be huddling down at the end here, hiding under the remains of my red tiger lotus. Now, I say the remains... There's clearly still lots and lots of red tiger lotus going on in this tank. 
but it is not nearly what it looked like not too long ago. I got in there and I did some serious um, chopping and we gave it a real haircut and it now almost seems like I might have done a little too much. It might have gone through a little bit of shock. Uh, I did lose some more fronds or uh, some more lily pads after trimming it and that could be because the plant went into shock or it could be simply that the plant is just going through a natural stage or cycle and it's just going to sort of go dormant for a little while and then come back seems like it's recovering you can see how much new growth i have down here now these are all small but again i did get in there and cut a lot of stuff back so um you know having that plant go through a little bit of shock is not going to be unexpected the discus are all still doing really well this one here uh, or possibly that one in the back these two they're starting to get really some size to them um, you know when you you know if you're a viewer and you see them once in a while you might notice like boy they sure have grown up since the last time I saw them but when you see them every day you just don't realize how big they're getting uh, until all of a sudden you're like okay wow those are getting uh, noticeably larger aren't they and that just sort of happened the other day for me and it's interesting because the blue diamonds were the ones I got first, and these all have an additional month on the red turquoise ones, and yet it seems like the red turquoise are getting bigger than the blue diamonds. Not all of them, but the red turquoise are definitely getting some girth to them, or not some girth, but some size to them. Uh, these three right here are probably the three biggest ones in the tank and it's weird how they're all sort of huddled together and they're even making like a weird pattern they have their tails together and they're making like a triple pointed cross or something it's weird <laughs> never seen them hang out like that it almost looks like their tails are all stuck together uh the yellow fish there these are millennium rainbow fish they are albinos and the bright yellow ones are the females and then that really really vibrant orange one there is my last remaining male so I've had them for quite a few years now, and the school is dying off. I don't know if I had some issues with them early on, but I did lose a few uh, over the years, and we're down to just three of them now from seven that I originally started with uh, many years ago. So at some point, I'm going to replace them. Probably going to do another kind of rainbow fish. I've always wanted some Bosmani, um, and so we might we wind up getting uh, some Bosmani rainbow fish in this tank at some point, uh, if I can ever work that out. And then, of course, don't forget my big, beefy Tenopoma cuterostra. Sold from the PetSmart as the African spotted leaf fish. And when it was younger, it did indeed have a more spotted and speckled appearance. But as it's gotten older, those spots and speckles have faded. Don't I wish that was true in us? <laughs> my spots and speckles keep getting darker and bigger. But not his. His are fading away. And I do say his because if you look right there, you see those little sort of spiky points that stick off of the back edge of that gill flap. You can see them on both sides. That indicates that it is a male. The females do not have those little uh, sort of spiky protuberances on their gill flaps right there. Let's see if we can zoom in on that a little bit. You get a better look at them. See how it's got those sort of white spikes sticking off of the back of that gill flap? That indicates that it is a male. So otherwise, not much to speak of. I do have some catfish on the bottom. I got a couple of chocolate zebra plecos. And I do have a Cynodontus uteris that usually hides in this cave down here. I get a glimpse of it once in a while. It's pretty big. Uh, it's not quite the size of the old one I used to have when it died, but it's getting up there. It's probably at least two-thirds of the size uh, of the former one for my long-term viewers who remember that big one. Or you can actually just check out some of my older videos. I do have over 4,000 videos in my catalog. I'm not, um, that's not hyperbole. I do have over 4,000 um, videos in my catalog at this point and all of my tanks have their own playlist and there's even some playlists of tanks that I got rid of years and years ago but the playlist still exists and the videos are still there uh, so you can check all that stuff out if you're interested uh, in checking out the channel so we've also got my 20 gallon tank this is another one of my tanks that I hang the floodlight over 
and you can just about make out the edge of my banjo catfish right there and we've also got the ember tetras we've got uh, red wag molly in here we got a couple of little embers um, or uh, endlers guppies not embers but endlers guppies that's the one on the right the one on the left is an ember tetra so I got in here not long ago, maybe in the back you can make out that orange fish, that's a red wag platy I've got in there. And then this is my new Cardinalis plant that I got. It's doing really well in this tank, there's actually nothing in this tank eating it. Although I do have to say, I should have pointed out the Cardinalis that I put in here is doing really well too. This is growing uh, even better because there's nothing in this tank eating on it either. The other tank I tried putting it in was the Garami tank, and the Garamis are plant eaters, and that is not doing well. I don't think it's going to survive in my Garami tank. But I recently got in here, uh, again, the other night during one of my live streams. Uh, most of my tank maintenance gets done during my live stream, so again, if you want to hang out with me, check out my tanks, watch me get in there working on them, shooting the breeze. Uh, we smoke a lot of weed, we have a good time, so again, you want to just hang out uh, with me in the fish room on a Friday or a Sunday night. Don't forget, I do uh, live streams every week at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and in the last one, we got in this tank and we did a bunch of plant removal. I didn't really wipe the glass down or do much of a water change. We vacked a little bit of stuff off the bottom bit of mulm and stuff got vacked off the bottom uh, but otherwise we just pulled a lot of plants out of there got a lot of duckweed uh, we still have a fair amount of duckweed in here as it is so we can take that and put it over here in the goldfish pond and they absolutely love it Anybody that gets an opportunity to put a pond in their fish room, I highly recommend it. For my longtime viewers that remember when I used to have a um, waterfall right here, that was pretty fancy. I loved my waterfall, but it does not compare to having a koi pond in the basement. So that is pretty fantastic. So back to what I was talking about. Uh, basically just got in here, did some work, got the tank spruced up, looking nice and good. Really just trying to give you a few minutes to have a look at the tank. This here is African water fern and it's supposed to do better in a current, which is why I have it placed directly in front of the uh, filter outflow there. And it seems to be doing pretty well. It's already attached to the woodwork. It's growing against that nice and firmly. Uh, we did have some stuff down here that we removed last night, so I actually do have a few pieces uh, of this fern available if anybody's interested. Uh, I do sell my aquatic plants, so you can email me if you're interested in that. We'll make arrangements. I can get you some plants. So down here, not really going to worry about looking at it, but we have three clown plecos in quarantine and they've been in there for a very long time months now i've just not gotten around to taking them out and putting them anywhere but one of these days we'll get around to doing that i keep waiting to do it on a live stream but again never really get around to doing the live stream so last but certainly not least is butterbeans tank and let me get down here and scare him away a little bit i'm gonna turn that forward facing light on i got a light across the back of the tank and then i keep one across the front of the tank but unless i'm shooting video or doing a live stream or something then i usually keep that forward light turned off it's just an excessive amount of light in this tank um, for the very low lighting plants i need so i do not need two shop lights because that's what that is it's a um, it's a small shop light, but it's still a shop light on this tank. So one shop light is usually plenty. I don't need to have two of them going on in there. So he was just up checking out his little feeding ring. I have a piece of styrofoam that floats in the tank and has a hole in the middle, and that's where I put his food. So he knows where to come and find it. It doesn't float and swirl all around the tank. Otherwise, I feed him the snails. And, of course, you can see the remnants of dinners passed all over the uh, bottom of the tank. Those are all the empty snail shells that he's gotten the meat out of. Now that we're no longer in brackish water, it looks like my Java is starting to recover a little bit. The Anubius down here seems like it's starting to recover. If you look really closely, you can see a tiny little bit of new growth popping out right there. Plus this leaf uh, is fairly new as well. So we definitely have some new growth happening on the Anubius in here now that we've got it down to fresh water. Over time, I've reduced this from brackish water. We're down into fresh. 
and we're fully at fresh at this point. I'm not adding any marine salts at all. And so effectively the water in this tank is the same as the water in all my other tanks. This is just no longer uh, even a little tiny bit brackish. This is just fresh water at this point and he seems to be doing pretty well. Although I do notice in the middle of his back in the dead center he does have a little bit of scuffle looking marks or something. Not really sure what's going on with that. Um, so maybe one of the theories I've had over the years is that if he stays in any consistent salinity for too long, it's probably bad for him. I probably should just mix it up occasionally, sometimes put a little salt in there, sometimes not. And I think that changing environment from time to time will actually be better for him. So there you go, everybody. All right, we're going to call that the end of this video. We don't need to go back to the 29 necessarily. We'll come back here to the pond. So remember, I do my live streams as I've been saying, but I've also got a membership area. And if you're interested in the memberships, you will get access to a third live stream every week. I do a live stream for my members only on Wednesday nights and it's a little more intimate. We just hang out. It's just a, a handful of us usually, um, anywhere from 8 to 15 people, something like that. And of course being private and, you know, members area, it, we're a little more free to just chit chat about whatever, etc, etc. So that's always a lot of fun. I look forward to my Wednesday uh, live streams. But we also have a Discord server. So if you're interested in that, you will get access to the Discord server by joining a membership. It's $2.99 a month, and again, gets you access to all that, the live stream, the Discord server. If you're interested in getting a sticker with my channel logo on it, all you got to do is contact me. If you're a member, I'll get you one of those. Otherwise, they will be available for sale shortly, but we're going to have to work out how to do all that stuff, so we'll get to that when we get to it. All right, everybody, going to call that the end of this video. Going to say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you're subscribed, and hopefully I will see you this week on my live stream. So thanks again. I'll see you real soon.